Hello and welcome to the recap of today's CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. Today we've been working on the Sustainable Urban Design app. Um, what we have basically are two apps, a client and a server more or less. Uh, it's not clear cut, but that's the basic model we're working. We've got a Django Wagtail client that does render some, a uh, server that does render some client uh, templates and administrative views. And we've got a JavaScript uh, app that uh, allows us to run some uh, like uh, analysis, some urban analysis type things, and configure variables. And I'm trying to kind of merge the two a little bit. Uh, the task here is to allow people to kind of select or configure urban analysis projects. Um, by setting like these variables, we've done this in a previous uh, hangout. Uh, you know, you can say we're working in kilometers or miles, and uh, we want people to be within three kilometers of a um, source of food or school or you know park, and uh, see the areas in the urban environment that have that meet those criteria and those that don't, and try to uh, intervene to improve um, the areas that might be lacking in critical services or infrastructure. So in our Wagtail and Django project, software project, we have this idea of an urban analysis project. And here's one, you just kind of define a project, you give it a name and a, a description in a, a geographic area or scope. And the idea is that when you've got the project defined in a geographic area, then you'll only get data for that area and your analysis will only work on data for that area. So you won't be loading the whole world or the whole country or the whole region data. You'll just be loading and working with data that's relevant uh, to your project. Now the this is a pretty straightforward interface uh, to define and manipulate the project um, boundaries, but I want to tie it into this kind of more uh, intuitive interface for defining the um, project parameters. A project, an urban design project can consist of many layers. Uh, for example, you might be looking at housing and food or land use, transportation, utilities, health, safety, educa safety yeah, education, you know, all sorts of um, uh, aspects relating to livability and sustainability, which are kind of two sides of the same coin. And um, you can choose those which layers are relevant to your project as well as the parameters that you, you know, you're setting your own goals, things that are meaningful and relevant to your context. We don't want to predefine those. Um, now, what we did today is essentially just added a button here. So this is the Wagtail projects list. And we've got a button here that essentially launches the, um, the JavaScript client. Uh, and what I need to actually do, I just realized, is pass in the uh, project ID. So uh, each project has a unique identifier, and uh, we'll use that project ID to um, run queries and get data, um, which this is hard coded right now, but so the data is coming in. And you'll see the project boundaries as well as um, data for each layer. And when you change this, the, you'll save it back into the the project model here. So there's still quite a lot of work to be done here, um, but we're just taking it incrementally. So let's just take a quick look at the code. Um, uh, one more thing that's worth mentioning is this Wagtail um, CMS allows you to define custom settings. So I just, def uh, and menu structures and things like that. Comes with the settings menu by default. We add a new sub item called client app and a URL setting so you can, um, De de deploy the client app separately. I'm not sure if that in the long run is going to be how we deploy it or if I like build it and bundle it with the Django project. I'm not exactly sure. So I don't want to kind of, <laughs> anyway, this works for now since they're both running on the different ports here. You can see, oops, actually the, um, anyway, I got the, client app running here in one shell and then the server app is running in a different shell. It happened, I started debugging so we actually ended up loading it over here. So the code changes um, weren't too extensive. I'm stopping the debugging session so that's gonna um, stop the app running but 
essentially what we needed to do is enable the Wagtail Contrib Settings app, which Wagtail comes with that. It just doesn't enable it by default, as well as define a new um, Django app, in our Django project called Site Settings here. We define a model. It's mainly the scaffolded the project and define uh, the app and define the model. So we include it in our project apps. As well as we want to, uh, I thought we would want to pass in some settings to the template. So I enabled the settings uh, context processor. We didn't end up ended up I didn't did not end up using that uh, because Wagtail essentially lets us define things strictly through code. So we created a new model. It's essentially a Django model. And it's done in this models pi. I've got a note, um, Wagtail is multi-site by default. That means each site can have its own settings, um, values. And we're not using the multi-site functionality, but it is enabled. And again, this is not running, but uh, sites, there's multiple. Potential for multiple sites. Just by adding a site, which could be cool uh, if multiple organizations want to use the same project. And so we have a URL field and a panel to edit it. And essentially, Wagtail is smart enough to look at the type of the URL field, and uh, Django is validating the URL. And we just gave it a verbose name, so it would be a little bit um, cleaner in the menu. The other thing we did is register. We've already got a Wagtail hook to render this admin page, including adding projects and editing and deleting them. And we wanted to add this other button here. And to do that, we had to define a button helper class, which inherits from page button helper because uh, actually, I don't think this needs to inherit from page button helper. I thought I had forgotten that the um, project's model is just a regular Django model. It's not a, actually a Wagtail page model. In any case, so I've got the wrong import there. I'll fix that. Uh, you define these class names so that you can control the styling. And we create a function that returns our button um, configuration. Uh, it's a configure button is, is a little bit uh, this button is to configure the project uh, So I'm calling it a configure button whereas this is an edit project. This is to delete this project uh, And those are already part of um, this functions that'll generate those uh, So in any case Configure here is because that's the name of the button and not the verb and um, We have some text that we use in a couple of places then I needed to retrieve the, the client settings and get the uh, client app URL. Uh, I'm using get here because I'm only expecting one value to return. But like I said, this is a multi-site um, project. So it's this is potentially buggy. I don't know how to really handle it. Uh, so I just added a note to myself that, to see if we need to restrict that or make a setting global. I'm not sure. Now all you do is return a configuration dictionary here with a URL label title and some class names and that all the um, label I think is used for the tooltip the title is probably used for the button text or the other way around and the URL is used in the anchor tag to take us over there and I'm going to pass in a URL property I forgot to do that we want to add an argument here or a um, URL path parameter for the project ID so that I can run database queries to get the meta, project metadata and specifically that geometry and start populating the view. We'll do that in the next session. And finally, we just call this uh, get buttons for object and the object here we're looking at is this project object. This page renders a table of projects and for each of those projects it renders these buttons. And we have the local object in scope and we just get the default buttons and we add the configuration button and return those. And that's pretty much it. Uh, that's one of the things I really like about Wagtail is 
Uh, it handles a lot of the boilerplate templating and routing uh, like URLs, definitions, and things for you. At the same time, uh, every so often I'm bumping up against some of the conventions like the multi-site where they don't quite fit uh, the project and maybe throw me for a little bit of a loop. But overall, this was pretty straightforward and I still really enjoy working with um, Wagtail. I think it's got a great community, great documentation. I was relying on a couple of tutorials. Um, I just want to keep this short, but otherwise I, I should give uh, shout outs. I use the uh, learnwagtail.com and another tutorial. Actually, I'm going to check the history here. Uh, yes, this Tim on web had, had a great tutorial on adding these buttons. I, I used um, this because the Wagtail documentation was a little bit short here on specifically adding a new button, um, defining a custom button. I think I was having some trouble finding the docs, but in any case, this was a great tutorial. Thank you, Tim on web for providing that resource. Okay, well, that's it. That's been a recap for today's codebuddies.org live code hangout. If you'd like to get involved with this project or other similar projects, stop by codebuddies.org. It's a great community, very active. There's a lot of hangouts and uh, groups for various um, technologies and industry practices. Everything data, you know, from data science to like Java programming, JavaScript, Python, Django. There's a lot of uh, PHP. There's you name it. There's enthusiasts and uh, for many different technologies. And everybody's welcome. Everybody has something to learn and everybody has something to teach. We are all co-learning here. CodeBuddies is also an open source project hosted on GitHub at github.com slash CodeBuddies. Uh, the project is being rewritten from the ground up. So if you'd like to get involved with a vibrant open source community and project, I do encourage you to check out the CodeBuddies repository. There's issues that are good for first timers as well as issues that we need uh, some help from more experienced developers with Django and React specifically. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Have a great day, and I hope you're staying well out there.